Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson number two in our Manifest Destiny unit, where we are answering the overall essential question, how did the United States expand from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean? Today, in lesson two, we're going to answer the essential question, what was the Trail of Tears? Uh, this is a very sad chapter in American history, and as a history teacher, it's not a chapter I particularly enjoy teaching about, but if we're going to truly understand our history, we need to understand the not-so-great things along with the things perhaps we enjoy studying a bit more. So, what was the Trail of Tears? First thing we're going to talk about today, your first left side question is who was President Andrew Jackson? Andrew Jackson is a rather controversial figure in American history, and by the time this lesson is over, you will know why. He is the guy on your $20 bill, at least for the time being. Andrew Jackson was the first president ever elected from a western state, Tennessee. So, in a sense, he was the first American president. Uh, he was born in the United States, um, and he was um, basically the most American president. He didn't have um, Eastern sensibilities. He didn't have uh, connections to Europe and the intellectual elites. He was a very Western American. Um, he was a hero of the Battle of New Orleans in the War of 1812. And, of course, we did not learn about the War of 1812 in class because uh, we are only a one-semester class. But the very last battle of the War of 1812 was the Battle of New Orleans, and Andrew Jackson was a conquering hero in that battle, which is what he was known for and why he was popular. Uh, he narrowly lost the election of 1824 to John Quincy Adams, uh, and there was a lot of controversy in that election because it was extremely close, and it was decided by the House of Representatives. And so four years later, Andrew Jackson was extremely angry and ran again. Um, the... Amount of disagreement and unpleasantness after that election is probably not all that different than the amount of disagreement and discord we had after the election of 2016. Between 1824 and 1828, they changed the voting laws in many states so a lot more people could vote because before that you had to be a white land-owning male and many states between 1824 and 1828 Eight got rid of the requirement to own land. And so three times more people voted in 1828 than voted in 1824. That's a lot. Three times as many people. That's, that's, um, that's significant. And therefore, because the composition of the electorate changed, uh, the results changed. Andrew Jackson won in 1828 overwhelmingly uh, he was a populist. A populist is someone who appeals to the, the popular masses, um, not necessarily the educated and wealthy elites, but basically what the common man, the average person, uh, thinks. Uh, President Trump is a populist. He appeals to the common man in much the same way. He doesn't appeal to the educated elites. Um, he appeals to the average Joe out there. And that's kind of what Andrew Jackson did. And that's kind of what Andrew Jackson was known for. So we're going to be talking about the Native Americans of the Southeast United States. Uh, in that map I've posted there, you see a, a representation of where the different tribes of that region lived at one point. Uh, as we begin this story, we should always review that um, from the beginning of European colonization, so go all the way back to Jamestown, or you could go to uh, when Spain um, colonized Mexico, or pretty much any time any European country colonized any aspect of the Americas, there had always been conflict with Native Americans. 
Um, as far as the European settlers were concerned, the colonizers, the native culture was radically different and they were seen as a threat and being in the way. I need to actually change that to seen, S-E-E-N. Um, so through no fault of their own, the Native Americans had always been there, but the Europeans who were moving in essentially were uncomfortable with the fact they were still there. Um, we could talk about that and we could have a lot of uh, very legitimate and engaging conversations about that topic. Many native tribes actually tried to adopt American ways and become quote unquote civilized um, so that they would not be seen as much of a threat by uh, the Americans, but that didn't really help. The uh, people who w wanted their land still wanted their land and it didn't matter how hard they were trying to be quote unquote civilized the Americans simply wanted them off that land so they could take it for themselves. And it was really that simple. It's pretty just blatant to put it that way, but that's exactly what it was. So despite all of what the natives tried to do to become civilized and to become non-threatening, many Americans simply wanted a Native Americans gone so they could take their land. Sad, but true. Here is an exact quote from Andrew Jackson. By persuasion and force, they have been made to retire from river to river and from mountain to mountain until some of the tribes have become extinct and others have left but remnants to preserve for a while their once terrible names. Surrounded by the whites with their arts of civilization, which by destroying the resources of the savage, doom him to weakness and decay. So essentially here, President Jackson is bragging about the fact that um, native tribes are being forced away from their land and are slowly disappearing. Uh, and he's asserting that white civilization is superior and so that natives must suffer weakness and decay. And I will allow you to make your own judgments about how you feel about that statement, but that is an exact quote from President Andrew Jackson. So, in 1830, one of the most infamous pieces of legislation in the history of the country was passed. It was the Indian Removal Act of 1830. So, our next left side question is, what was the Indian Removal Act of 1830? And um, it's a pretty blatantly titled bill, so you could probably figure this out, but let's talk about it. President Jackson appealed to a popular desire to relocate natives to the West. There was a significant part of the voting population, especially Andrew Jackson's supporters, who wanted the Native Americans gone. And they wanted them moved to the West, where uh, Americans at that point in time wouldn't have to deal with them anymore. It was literally that blatant. Uh, so these are the names of the actual tribes, the Creek, Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw, and Seminole tribes still had populations in the southeast. So we're talking Florida, Georgia, Alabama, uh, Tennessee, um, Mississippi, those states um, are the states where we're talking about here. They still had uh, Native Americans living there. And basically farmers in the southeast just wanted to take that land. So in 1830, Congress passed a law and President Jackson signed it, the Indian Removal Act. It basically gave uh, the government the power to make treaties with the natives, um, making them move west of the Mississippi River. Uh, which used to be the boundary of the United States. Remember, after the Louisiana Purchase, the boundary got moved west. But uh, this law did not authorize force. And that's an important point here. It did not authorize the removal of uh, the Native Americans um, at the point of a gun. But it did authorize the government to make treaties with them. Uh, this actually went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court, to its credit, actually asserted that the Native Americans had a right to their land and they could not be forcibly removed from their land. But President Andrew Jackson, of course, had his famous quote, 
something along the lines of last time I checked the Supreme Court does not command the US military and by implication I Andrew Jackson president of the United States do command the US military and uh, you can probably put two and two together and figure out what he meant by that so there was now a legal basis to remove Native Americans from their land despite the fact the Supreme Court sided with the Native Americans. Basically, we have a conflict here between the branches of government. The legislative branch passed a law. The executive branch signed that law. The executive branch had the authority to carry out that law. And the judicial branch basically tried to render that law unconstitutional, but the judicial branch had no basis to enforce its ruling. And so Andrew Jackson just ignored it. Um, there are similar constitutional crises taking place um, in our current environment. And um, yeah, so the Constitution uh, is only as perfect as the people who operate within it. That's, that's one of the lessons of history. So what was the Trail of Tears? Um, one of the saddest chapters in American history. It's called the Trail of Tears. Over the next 10 years, after the Indian Removal Act was passed, the natives of the Southeast were coerced, forced, manipulated, um, pressured, use whatever word you want to use, to leave their ancestral lands and move to what was called Indian Territory. Indian Territory is now mostly what we consider the state of Oklahoma. And, and you had all these tribes from different regions. So here you got Northern Mississippi, here you have Alabama and Georgia, here you have Florida. They're all being moved to this parcel of land here in what is now Eastern Oklahoma. Um, and keep in mind the climate in Oklahoma is different. The land is different and quite frankly, not as good. Um, and all of these tribes that were once competitive with each other are all of a sudden being moved to more or less the same space of land. Um, so you have a recipe for all kinds of interesting things here. Um, thousands of natives uh, actually died along the long trek to a land that was totally different and miserable um, than where they came from. So you know, the, the, this land was not quality land. They didn't want to move there. They were moved there by force. And many of them died along the way, which is where the term Trail of Tears comes from. Uh, many Americans were ashamed of the actions of their government and knew that this was a deep and cruel moral failure. So not all Americans supported this. Many were ashamed. Um, but... Honestly, the majority of Americans supported it. The majority of Americans voted for President Andrew Johnson and elections have consequences. So Andrew Jackson left office in 1837. He was very proud of what he had accomplished, but for rather obvious reasons, he is still controversial to this day. Uh, he happens to be one of President Trump's um, favorite presidents. In fact, uh, behind President Trump's desk in the Oval Office is a painting of Andrew Jackson. Um, and many people would actually like to have him removed from the $20 bill because of his legacy with the Indian Removal Act. So this is a controversial figure in American history for rather obvious reasons. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is once again time to write a summary, five to eight sentences, please. In your summary, I would like you to answer these questions. Who was Andrew Jackson? Who were the Native Americans of the Southeast? Why did President Jackson want to relocate the Native Americans? And what were the consequences of that removal? Uh, once again, I provided you a little blurb there on what makes a good summary and what does not. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumendahl once again signing off on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.